So when I say we're going to solve an oblique triangle, you did right triangles. What are oblique triangles? Obtuse triangles. Yeah, nicely read. Oblique triangles are any triangle that's not right. As long as it doesn't have a right angle in it, am I not? It's not obtuse. It's oblique. There's a difference. Oblique can be any angle as long as there's not a right angle in it. You can have any set of angles. They might be one angle may be larger than 90. It may not be larger than 90. But okay. To give you the the quickie, how did they come up with the law of sines? They were looking here at this lovely triangle ABC, and they wanted to find a relationship between sides and angles because you, the only thing we could solve was right triangles. And so they decided, well, okay, if the only thing we want to solve was turn it into a right to right triangle, so they put this vertical line smack down here from that top vertex, and they made. Do you see two right triangles, one on each side? Mm -hmm. With both of them having H as their common side? Yes. So all they did is they said, okay, looking at the left-hand triangle, the only things they know in the left-hand triangle, they know angle A, they know side B, and they know the height. Yeah, so so what's, what's, the, what's the only trig function you could use if you have this angle? Triangle. You know opposite... And, I, and hypotenuse, so, so they had to do sine. So they said, okay, well, the sine of A is side H over B. Then they did the same thing on the other side. It also, you can't use side C because side C goes the whole length. So we don't know C. So once again, all they could use was sine of B was H over A. And they said, hey, look, they both have H in them. So if you solve for H, by just simply multiplying the fraction part to the other side, the denominator over, if the H's are equal, what has to be true? That they're both equal? Because then they're both equal. So B times the sine of A was equal to A times the sine of B. And they went, oh, that's too easy. B's and A's mixed together. Wouldn't it be nice if we had all the A's on one side and all the B's on the other side? <laughs> so somebody said, hey, let's just divide the A over to the left, the B over to the right, so that we get our A's and B's on the same I side of the equal sign. Yeah. Yeah. You can do it one step or two at a time if you want to look at it. So now, you actually have then the sine of angle A over side A is equal to the sine of angle B over side B. It's a ratio, but it's not the angle, it's not angle A to side A, it's the sine of angle A is in ratio. We have a proportion here. And it's also true with angle C as well. You can go back and do this with any of the angles. So it's, you can always pair the sine of an angle to a side. We can always set up this proportion. And it can be flipped over. So you can put the sides on top or you can put the angles on top. When I'm working it, whatever I'm trying to solve for, if I need to find a side, I put my sides on top. If I need to find an angle, I put my angles on top. Because uh, the algebra is easier. If you put whatever you're looking for on top. But you can do any of those proportions fairly simply. Oh, yeah, actually, the law of sine, and actually, now that you know law of sine, you actually don't have to know, know Oscar had a heap of apples. Because law of sine can do any Oscar problem. Because once you know law of sine, it actually is more encompassing, I guess. I'm waiting because I have people popping in. So, do you think you've seen this before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I know we give all signs and everything like that. Law of signs by itself just. I think there's a bigger, longer version of the law of signs. No, that law of cosines is long. A lot of stuff to it. It's not hard, but it's got a lot of stuff in it. Okay. So, I wanted to solve this triangle. <laughs> and I want to solve it for angle A. Okay, so you would look at it and go, right now, the only thing I know, this is not a right triangle. The only thing I know, I need to si find side A. In order to do law of signs, let me point this out. In order to do law of signs, you have to know one pair. You have to know a side and its opposite angle. You've got to know one pair to be able for law of signs to be possible. So if I want to find A, whoops, I would go A is to sine of what? It's opposite angle, 52. But now, what's a pair that I know? Yeah. 
since you find angle B, since we know 180 degrees, we're in a triangle. So if that adds up to 122, that means I've got 58 degrees left to be angle B. And so then you can set up a pair that you know, which would be what to what. So you find 58. Okay, and what do you want to do to get A by itself? Yeah, you're going to multiply the sine of 52 over to the other side, so you're going to be timesing by sine of 52. And this is why your calculator is going to be your best friend, because you're going to have to punch all this stuff in. I would type it in, I would do a fraction and type it in as 232 times sine of 52 divided by sine of 58. That would be my personal preference to it. And I actually know this answer. Okay. And okay, they're going to round off pretty much using significant digits. Look at the original measurement. In this case, the side length in this was whole number 232, so they're going to round this one, it had three significant digits. They're going to round this one the same, so we're going to get, they're going to round it to 216 on this particular one. So a normal law of sines is pretty simple to solve. Now, the question is, how do you know when you can use law of sines? Because later on, I'm going to give you other triangles and law of sines won't work. So how do you know when you can and when you can't? Oh, and well, I'm doing all let, let me draw this the way you would have drawn it in geometry. When I, what I originally gave you is I gave you angle 52 degrees, this side, and this angle. What congruence theorem is that a picture of? Uh, angle, side, angle, side, angle. Does those angles be labeled differently? Oh, so thank you, Timothy. Two, yes. They are different. Right. You are correct. Okay, uh, right. so law of signs works if you have angle side angle. Okay, it's going to work anytime you know two angles, because if you know two angles, don't you automatically know the third angle? Yeah. So it's going to also work for angle angle side, as long as you've got two angles. Okay, and then it, it works for one other rule that you were, was not a congruence theorem in geometry. Angle side side. Angle side side? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but <laughs> angle side side or side side angle we would prefer, thank you. <laughs> so with this group that one we'll probably remember better. But that's the one that causes us trouble. Just imagine the part Okay. <laughs> it is what's known as the ambiguous case of the law of signs. Anybody know what ambiguous means? It means it unclear. Yeah, unclear may mo be multiple possibilities. In our case, if you have a side-side angle triangle situation where they gave you side-side angle, it might result in the information might not even form a triangle. It's not possible for that, that si those two sides in that angle to even make a triangle. It might be one triangle or it could form two possible different triangles. So if you have a side-side angle, you're going to have to check for, uh-oh, if it's, if it's one of the other two, it's automatically going to work. The answer's good. But if it's side-side angle, you're going to have to check it out. And this is how I want to... I need a ruler here real quick. Prove it to you. Suppose I had given you angle A here in this picture. This side, call it B. And then I would have, since it's side-side angle, where would the other side have to be? Off of B. It has to be out of here. Okay, well, this is my point. If I measure this red line, it's about six and a half inches. Okay, if I measure, oops, I made it too long. Sorry, it's got to be shorter. <laughs> it's not six and a half inches, it's shorter. It's five and a half inches. If I measure five and a half inches, no matter where I turn it, it's five and a half inches, it's never going to hit down here. It's not long enough. The side is too short, and there's no way it can actually form a triangle. Okay? Sometimes you'll get a side that's just perfect, and it forms one triangle. Or sometimes you'll get a side, like this blue line, which is too long. It's about nine and a half. Okay? I could be nine and a half, and I could hit out here. 
But I can also swing. Oh, shoot. I didn't even know we're up here already. Make it shorter again. Sorry. I thought these links were some of old notes, but they're not working. We'll try that. Make it about eight. I think eight will hit. Eight could hit here, or I can swing eight, and it can hit clear over here. So I could have a triangle coming out this way, or it could have been a triangle, this little bitty skinny triangle over here. With the ambiguous case, sometimes there's two triangles. And so our problem is, how do we mathematically know which one we've got when we're working a problem? You're not going to draw these out to scale. You don't want to sit there and draw them out. So how do we tell? The numbers will tell us. Okay, so here's an example. Do we all see that this one is side-side angle? Side-side yeah. angle. Okay. And actually, in this case, what's the only angle I can go find first here? I know the angle C and its side. I could only, the only other pair I could set up, I could find A. That's the only choice. I have to find angle A. Even if I told you to find angle B, you couldn't do it first. You would have to still always find angle A. You'll be stuck solving a certain thing first. But I'm, I'm content on this one. We'll find A. That's fine. Okay. So, if you were going to set up a normal law of sines here, what would you put on top? If you want to find angle A, do you sign of A on top? To what side? 25. 25. Okay, and then the pair that I know, the 9. Okay, and in which case then I'm going to multiply the cross, and the 25 is going to be over here, and I'm going to jam that in my calculator. And I'm going to get, when you ca realize what you get, you're going to get the sine of A equals some decimal number. It's 2.3, da da da, go on. Okay? But that's not the answer. How do you get your calculator to give you an angle? Uh, inverse so you would need to do inverse sine of that angle you, or that number you just calculated. Your calculator is going to tell you error. Why? It's too big. Why is it too big? Yeah, sine can only be between one and negative one. So if this comes out to a number bigger than one, it can't be. So yeah, this is an error. And so you'll know when you're calculating it, you'll get sine is equal to a number bigger than one. So this is a situation where there's no triangle. This, this information cannot physically form a triangle. Yeah, no triangle. This problem, the second one here, is the exact same one as the one we just did, except it, this won't physically form a triangle. Those links can't make a triangle. It won't fit. Okay. So this one, all I did is I changed the 9 to a 23. It's the exact same problem. I just flipped one number. So now, so consequently then when I set it up, can I set it up the same? I'd have sine of A to 25, but this time I would have sine of 56 is to 23. And, of course, then I'll multiply the 25 over. This one, when you crunch that number, you'll get a decimal value of 0 0.9011. Then you have to stop and ask yourself, is that possible? That's good. Okay. So then you'll inverse sign it in your calculator and you will get 64.3 degrees. Okay. All that tells you is you for sure, you, it does make at least one triangle. Your problem is when it's side side angle, it might be making two. And here's the wrinkle. We're going to do triangle number one, triangle number two. Okay, in triangle number one, we know Angle A is 64.3 degrees. We know angle B is 56. We could find angle C if we needed it. We could go find all the parts if we needed them. Okay. Now, the question is, how could there be a second triangle? Well, you have to realize, this was sine equals 0.9011, a positive 0.9011. No? But if it's positive, what quadrant is sine positive in? 
first and second. So it might be that we have a 64.3 degree angle in the first quadrant, or it could be a 64.3 degree angle in the second quadrant. So there's that second option that, oh, I might have to come over here and go, well, maybe 64.3 was in the second quadrant, in which case my angle A would be 15.7. Did I do my math right? Yeah. Whoops, yank, yeah, sorry, I looked up, you're right, it's angle C is 56. So, okay, they're going to call them, when they do the second triangle, they call that A prime. you got angle A, A prime, anytime they put the little prime symbol on it, that means that's the second triangle. Because when you check answers in the back of the book, you're going to see A prime, B prime. Okay. Now, how do I know then whether the second triangle is possible? Just because I can calculate it doesn't mean the triangle works. Well, what's going to happen is you're going to go, C couldn't change, could it? C was 56, they gave that to me? Yeah. Okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to add these two together. If they add up to more than 180 degrees, then the second triangle wasn't possible. If they add up to less than 180 degrees, then the second triangle is possible because there's still room for angle B to exist. So, and yeah, a lot of times it will be barely. <laughs> So in this case, if you add that up, that's uh, 171.7. So if that adds up to 171.7 total, then that says, hey, there's still room for the third one to exist. Yes, I'll get 8.3. So in this case, then, there are two triangles. There are two sets of answers. I simply took my angle, my 64.3 I calculated, but it could be first quadrant or it could be second quadrant. And so 180 minus 64.3 is 115.7. Yeah. So the, pro the biggest problem I have is people forget to check. Y'all don't look at it and go, oh, this is a side-side angle or an angle side-side problem, whichever makes you think of it. <laughs> people don't notice that and so then they forget to check for the second triangle. You only have to do it if it's that kind of a triangle. Anything else will work normally and work fine. That's the case. Because it wasn't a congruence theorem, it also isn't necessarily going to work here. But the answer has find A, so you don't need to do the because you need A. Yeah. If you only need, you'll have to do at least this much to make sure the triangle exists, so to make sure it doesn't go over 180. And so the answer A and A3. Yeah, that, that's okay, we're done anyhow. Okay, I have written a set of steps for how to do that that will be posted with the notes. I don't know that you can copy them that fast here, but... Pause the video. Pause the video? Okay, I'll just...